Welcome to another video presentation of accounting for stock based on the Sequada accounting framework. This video presentation will deal with class 3.1 goods for sale. So let us have a view of the class 3 stock. These are the different sub accounts that we have under the class 3 stock. This particular video presentation is going to dwell more or focus on the class 3 1 goods held for resale. That class 3 1 is subdivided into uh, different sub accounts. And these are the different sub accounts under account 31 goods held for resale. We have account 311 and account 312, which deal with goods held for resale, and account 313 biological asset, which is further subdivided into animal and plants. And then account 318, which is used for non-operating goods, goods which are not included in the normal operating cycle of a business, of the entity. So after having reviewed all of these accounts which we use for account uh, 31 or the sub-accounts used in account 31, let us then look at the double entry which we are going to use in account 3 1 and also define some terms which we are going to use all along the video presentation. I think the definition of terms must come before the double entry on account 3 1. So let us go to the definitions of terms that you are going to use during this video presentation first. So let us start by defining or classifying inventory or stock. It's first of all important to know that inventory or stock are assets. And as such, they are recorded in the asset section of the balance sheet. So these are assets which are either held for sale in the ordinary course of business, either goods or finished products. Goods are recorded in account 31, goods held for sale are recorded in account uh, 31, and finished products are recorded in account 36. The entity can have stock of goods which are held for sale either by purchasing them and selling them at their current state just like in the merchandising business or by converting raw material into final finished products and selling the finished products just as in the manufacturing industry but the bottom line here is you have goods which are held for sale inventory can also be assets which are in the process of production mean work in progress or services in progress or goods in progress or intermediary products these are not the finished article they are not the finished product yet but they have already crossed the stage of raw materials stock can also be materials or supplies to be consumed in the production process or in the rendering of services usually consumables or raw materials raw materials are consumed because they are converted into final products whereas consumables are used in order to perform a given service let us continue with our definitions The next item of definition will be to look at two different stock systems that we have in the Hara framework. 
The first one is the periodic stock system, which is one which records stock on a periodic basis, usually once at the end of the year. And it's during that time that stock is recorded or is capitalized as an asset. The second method is to use a periodic inventory system where you have a continuous, a perpetual inventory system, I beg your pardon, where you have a continuous method of recording stock, entry or exit of stock. In a perpetual inventory system, stock is carried out continuously. Not on a periodic basis, but on a continuous basis. It means that entries and exits of stock are recorded directly in the stock account, which is different from the periodic stock taking because entries and purchases of stock and materials are recorded as expenses and it's only at the end during the physical stock taking that the amount of stock is known and recorded under the stock account. But with a, per per a perpetual inventory system, stock entry and exit are recorded directly into the stock account and are not recorded, are not considered as expenses. We are going to see the treatment of this periodic and perpetual inventory system in much more detail when we will be looking at the double entry. So this particular video presentation is dealing with goods held for resale at their current state. It means goods that were purchased to be sold at their current state. Meaning without any conversion. So there is no process of converting raw materials into final pro or finished products. And as I said earlier, this ties mostly with merchandising business or retailing business. Non-operating goods will be classified separate, separately in account 318 if their value is more than 5% of the total current assets. It means that there will be a separate classification of non-operating goods if their value is more than 5% of the total current assets. If their value is not more than 5% of the total current assets, they are not going to be separately classified as non-operating goods, but all of the goods will be classified as one. As we defined earlier, we have two types of inventory systems. We can have the periodic inventory system or periodic stock system. And at the end of the year with this system, the entity will debit account 3-1 goods and credit account 6031 stock variation of goods by the amount of the closing stock which is determined at the time of the stock count usually at the end of the year as we have stated so the entity is going to debit account 31 goods and credit account 6031 and at the same time the entity, entity would debit account 6031 and credit account 31 goods by the initial stock amount at the beginning of the year. This double entry is such that crediting account 31 will remove the initial stock from the stock account and then will give way to the closing stock to be recorded in the stock account. So these are the double entries for a periodic stock system. For a perpetual stock system, the entity will debit for each stock entry account 31 by crediting account 6031 at the purchase cost of these goods which are intended to be sold at their current state without any conversion. 
any time the goods leave stock to be sold, account 31 will be credited for each stock exit by debiting the stock variation of goods account 6031. This double entry will be made at the cost of entry which is the purchase cost of the goods. In a separate video presentation, we are going to look at how to arrive at the purchase cost of these goods. However, we must note that with the perpetual stock system, even though our entity carries out the perpetual stock system, there must still be at least a physical stock taking done by the entity, usually at the end of the year or towards the end of the year. And now, during that physical stock taking, there might be a difference between the physical stock identified and the stock recorded into the system. If the difference arises and the physical stock discovered is more than the one in the system, then we must debit account 31 and credit account 6031 by that increase. If, however, the physical stock discovered is less, we must instead credit account 31 and debit account 6031. Debit, <coughs> I beg your pardon. Crediting this account 31 will be such that or will be in order to reduce the amount of stock in account 31. That is why the account will be credited. Okay, we have come to the end of this video presentation. We hope you have enjoyed the presentation. We hope it helped you in your studies, in your work. And as usual, don't hesitate to contact us and check out this page for more video presentations on the Cisco Accounting Framework. But for now, bye-bye.